Let's, let's jump in and get into more of the details of these migration strategies. So the first one is called uh, in-place migration. Uh, it's based on Iceberg's snapshot capability. So here is just a simple uh, Spark syntax of how to use the snapshot. It has more properties to it, but this is the basic syntax. You run the snapshot command, you give it what's the source table, what's the target table uh, within the same catalog. Uh, and then all it does is create a new iceberg table called target, builds out the metadata and points it to your existing files. The pros of that is quick, simple, really not a lot of work for you to do. One command, it's pretty quick. Um, minimal impact on the source table. Uh, there's not much that, that it really does here. It just creates met, uh, metadata and points to the old data. Uh, you can insert up and delete rows into the new table. Now it only does it into the new table. You cannot delete old data or you cannot update old data, right? You can only, uh, update, uh, sorry, update and delete the new data. Uh, changes are isolated from the original table. So anything that you're doing is inside of a single isolated snapshot on your, uh, on your iceberg table where the old data that you brought in is basically isolated away, you don't, you don't touch it. Um, the, the cons to this is minimal performance improvements because you're not really changing the old data, you're not compacting it or cleaning it. So your performance benefits aren't gonna really change. Uh, you're not gonna see any cost savings. Maybe if the new data that you're adding to this table eventually gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you may see some cost benefits there. But from the old table, you're not going to really see anything. Uh, this is typically a temporary solution. It's really ideal for testing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this for production type of use cases. Um, and then it's kind of limited schema and partition evolution. So when you do the snapshot, it copies the schema and partition information from the source into the target, but you're not really, you don't really have the option to change them uh, or repartition or do anything like that. So quickly how that works. So on the left side, I have the, the Hive catalog. There's a database uh, named DB. There's a table named source. It's already pointing to a Hive table in my S3 bucket. Uh, I'm going to execute the snapshot command uh, on top of a Spark cluster, for example. Uh, and then basically, a new table is created. We call it uh, DB target. And uh, at that point, then a folder is created. And then there's metadata files that are created. And this metadata files include the schemas and partition, a bunch of table properties that are gleaned from the files and from the, the, the source table. Uh, and then once we do that, then automatically the, the operation basically creates a mapping from the source parquet files to the manifest files in the iceberg table. So kind of like you have this snapshot here on the side, you can update it if you want, and you can kind of work on it with this data as it is from this point moving forward. Okay, the next one is another function available through Iceberg. Uh, this is called uh, Migrate. So the difference between Snapshot and Migrate is that Migrate actually takes a snapshot of the table, but then basically drops the old table. In this case, it doesn't physically drop it. It just renames the old table to something underscore backup. But that table is no longer uh, visible to your users. So whatever system they're using to query that table now needs to be aware that there's a new table querying it. So it's again, quick and simple. It's metadata only operation. You can insert other and delete rows on this table because you're creating a brand new table. So you can work with that table. Uh, performance improvement and cost savings because now that you have that new table, the iceberg table, you can actually execute compaction on it and clean up on it. And it'll go out and try to compact those files. So you can actually start seeing some performance benefits. The cons is that this is a hard cut over. So if, you, if you're not sure that this iceberg table is, is gonna work well for you, the second you run this command, it sort of hides away the old the hive table and starts showing the new iceberg table to your user. So right away, they're gonna query that table, which means your writers and your readers now need to be aware that they're writing, to this, uh, writing and reading to this iceberg table. So it's a bit of a hard um, task. So I would recommend not doing this uh, in production, unless you've tested and you know for sure this is the right thing for you. Um, all right. So the way this works is, again, very simple. You execute the migrate command. Uh, the source table is then renamed, right? There's a, added a, a backup uh, suffix to it. 
Uh, new table is created with the, with the name of the original table. Uh, new folder is created. Uh, new met, uh, metadata files are created. And then the old files from the old tables are get repointed to the new table via the metadata. So physical, the files themselves are not getting rewritten. They're not copied, they're not moved. They stay where they are. The manifest just points to those. And this is all done for you within this migrate function. So again, these two functions, really powerful, really helpful. I'll talk in more detail about when to use each one of them, but it's something that you uh, you can consider when migrating um, you know, your Hive tables to, uh, to Iceberg. Thank <laughs> you.